So what if we have an animation in 3ds Max that we would like to trigger in the same manner inside of Unity? So here I've just set up a very simple robotic arm that over time just uh, rises up and hammers down. And within the last 10 frames here, it will just reset to its original position. It won't do anything for the last frames. So this is the animation that we have. So we have a hammer and we have a reset. So what we'll do here is we'll just keep our keyframe animation. So I'll just select my hammer here, I'll deselect the ground. And now I'll just export this file to an FBX. Back in Unity, what I'll do is I'll just take my newly exported FBX file and drag and drop it directly into my folder here. So as soon as this is imported, it'll show up in your assets browser. I'll click the arm here. In the tabs up here, instead of model or rig, we will choose the animations. Within the animations here, we can see that we have take 001, which is our entire animation time. So both the hit and the revert. So the roll back here. So what we'll do is we will click clamp range and we'll clamp it to 50, which is just where the hit happens. So where the arm is at its final position. I will rename this to hit. Then I will add another clip. This will also be called take one in this case. We will call this rollback. But this, however, needs to be clamped to another area. So I'll click clamp range. And going from, in this case, frame 55 to, 50, uh, to 65, and I'll click Apply. So now I have two different animations added to this arm here. So as soon as I drop it into my hierarchy, I'll apply the import settings. With the Move tool, I will move it over, and I'll move next to my box here. Because then I'll take my camera and move the camera so that both of these objects are in focus. So if I select my arm here, we can see that we have an animator component, but we don't have any animator controller. So we'll need to add that in our assets folder. So right click choose create and choose animator controller. This one we'll call arm controller. Clicking the arm again, so arm 02 in this case, I can now take the arm controller that we've just created and put it into the controller field here. If I double click the arm controller, I now have a blank controller space for this arm here. We've just created these two clips, the hit and the rollback. So if we unfold the prefab here and we go down below all the meshes and everything, we have the hit and we have the rollback. Because these two are clips, we can just drag and drop them directly into our animator controller over here. So now my default is actually the one called hit. So as soon as I click play, the arm will basically just hit the ground, but it won't roll back. So it just plays back this hit here. So once again, we need a default state. So we will right click, create a state, an empty one. This is our idle state. I will right click it and I'll choose set as layer default state. So here now we have our hit and we have our rollback. And now we need to add a bit of script so that we can actually trigger the hit and the rollback separately. So selecting the arm again, we'll add another component to this. So click add component. In this case, we'll just call it, we'll just call it arm anim controller, new script. Yes, we will then double click the script and we'll load it into our Visual Studio. And again, we need to set up the exact same thing as we did before. So we'll have a public variable, which is an animator and we'll call it arm anim. So within the start, we want to get the component for the animator into the arm anim. So we'll say arm anim equal to the get component. So now within the update, we want to have two if statements in this case. So um, the first one, if input dot get key down, we want to listen for, uh, in this case, just Q, add curly brackets. And then here, we want to trigger the animation. So play, and we want to start out by playing the hit animation. So now we can just uh, copy paste this if statement. And instead of the Q, we want this to be the E. And instead of the hit, we want it to be the rollback. So now I'll save my script. So I'll go back into Unity. I now have my arm anim here, and I will take my animator from up here and make sure that it is the right one selected. So arm number two. So let's try to go into play mode. So it goes directly to new state. As soon as I hit Q, we have the hit animation playing. As soon as I hit E, I reset my animation. And I can also go to my cube and have it spinning and have both animations run running at the same time. So that was my overview of basic triggering animations with key presses in Unity. Thank you for watching.